This is a bad signal, but not the kind that you would use to call your favorite superhero. No, no. This one actually alerts a very notorious villain. Me. Okay, let me explain. I have a problem. And that problem is that my apartment doesn't have a doorbell. Why? Well, I guess the dude who built it realized that he could save like 50 bucks by leaving it out. The result? If I'm wearing headphones or watching TV or sleeping or taking a shower, I can't hear anyone knocking on the door unless they're basically punching a hole through it. So I came up with a solution that not only tackles this problem, kinda, but also makes my living room look way cooler and that is in order to make this a reality, we need to build two things. The front door button that people will push and the bat signal that will notify me when someone is outside. Obviously, we need to find a way to make those devices communicate wirelessly because I'm not gonna have cables running from the door to the living room. And that's where this guy right here comes in. This is an ESP32, a microcontroller that has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities as well as its own communication protocol called ESP Now. Using that protocol is extremely easy and perfect if you need wireless communication for simple projects. The only thing you need to make it work is the Mac address of the board you want to send messages to. Due to its simple nature though, I believe it could be hacked more easily. But why would you hack a doorbell? Like, just press the button, bro. Here's a simple example of two ESP32s communicating via ESP now. When I press this button, this LED turns on, but as you can see, it is not connected to this first microcontroller. So what's happening is that when I press it, ESP number one sends a command to ESP number two. In this case, it's just the letter A, which ESP number two interprets as turn the LED on. And when I lift my finger, another command is sent and the LED LED turns off. This guy is also capable of controlling LED strip lights and MP3 players, which are two essential things needed to create a signal. Visual alert and sound. So we'll definitely use an ESP32 to bring to life this project. Next thing we'll have to do is design the front door button. We want something simple, not too big, and that will perfectly hold the circuit. So I came up with this design that has the bat logo as the button, and an indicator LED to let the person know that the bell has been rung. And yes, that's the past participle of the word ring. We also have an opening for a USB-C connector. However, this device will not be connected to an outlet. The connector is actually there to charge the battery that powers it. And yes, it will have a battery. And you probably might be thinking, what is stupid? as idea. You're gonna have to charge that circuit very often, especially since the microcontroller will be using wireless communication, which is a battery destroyer. Well, in case you forgot, I'm kind of a genius. So I obviously thought of that. So what I'm going to do is use the button to turn on the circuit, meaning that the battery will be connected only when the person is pressing the doorbell. That's the reason why I added the indicator LED, because they will have to hold it for at least a couple of seconds while the ESP32 turns on, initializes, and sends the message. So after 3D printing all the parts, it's time to put together the circuit. I started by setting the 3 printed button in place using a couple of holders. As you can see, it doesn't fall off. Next, I glued the translucent cover for the indicator LED. Then I added the actual button. It makes a really nice clicky sound when pressed. After that, I put in the battery, the battery charging module, and a switch. And I'll tell you what that switch is for in a second. Next, I added a voltage regulator to bring the battery voltage down to 3.3 volts, which is the logic level at which the ESP32 operates. Finally, I added the indicator LED and the microcontroller. So before putting on the lid, I will test if the doorbell is communicating with the ESP32 that will be in charge of the bat signal. The way it works is that once we press this button, this device will send a command to the ESP32 in charge of the bat signal. Once this one receives the command, it will send another one back, and that's when this LED right here will turn on blue. So I'm just gonna press it. Red means it sent it, and blue means it received the signal back. So we can now cover the circuit with the lid. Something that I forgot to show you before closing this thing is how the charger works. So as you can see here, we have this switch that changes the device from operating mode to charging mode. The reason why I added this switch is because if you leave the battery connected to the charging module, it will actually drain the battery a little bit. So in order to recharge the battery, we just put it in charging mode and connect a USB-C cable. That red light means it's charging. To be honest, I should have added like another translucent piece of PLA over here, but I forgot. <laughs> so I'll just have to see it sideways. But still, red means charging. And if we put it in operating mode, you can see that the battery stops charging. Blue means it doesn't detect the battery or that the battery is actually being charged already. Now it's time to build the most important thing, the bat signal. And since I'm placing it in the living room, it has to be the best iteration ever. And to me, that also corresponds to the best Batman we've ever had, which is none other than the one from the Dark Knight trilogy. I don't care what anyone says, Christian Bale's Batman is 
I also wanted to use that symbol for the button, but the iconic classic logo fitted it best due to its round shape. And not gonna lie, it looks pretty cool. For this part, I'm just gonna start building it so you can see the final result without any spoiler. So let's get into it. I'll start by building the visual alert part of the signal. First, I'll test the LEDs to see if they're all working properly, because if I find out that one of them is not working after I install them, I will become the Joker instead of Batman. After that, I went ahead and placed them in a 3D printed base that has the outline of the Bat logo. Since it was wider than what my 3D printer can do, I had to divide it in three sections, which I super glued together. Next, I soldered all the lights and checked if they were still working fine. Thankfully, they were. Then I put the lights in the actual bad logo. The dimensions were a bit tight so they barely fit, but that was nothing that brute force couldn't solve. I also put translucent covers on top of the lights. So far, so good. After that, I glued the last 3D printed part to close the front side of the logo. Finally, I added all the electronic components and solder cables to connect them. I used the ESP32, an MP3 player, a sound amplifier, a voltage regulator, and a touch sensor, which I will use for a cool extra function. As you could see, those cable connections aren't super pretty, but they work. Funnily enough, that's also what I tell girls about me. Check out how it looks like when it turns on. Pretty cool, right? I also put the speakers in cases with lids that resemble Batman's eyes. Or at least that's what I thought when I designed them. So now that the bat signal is ready, it's time to put it in place. I chose my living room because I'll be able to easily see it whenever I'm watching TV or hear it when I'm cooking or working. Whenever the doorbell is wrong, the bat signal will say something funny to let me know that I have to open the door. Here are a couple of examples. Gotham's finest delivery, I mean danger, awaits. Open the door, Dark Knight. The bat button has been summoned. Justice, or maybe a package, awaits behind that door. Also, remember the touch sensor? Well, the reason why I put it in there is to turn on a secret lighting mode. Just lightly tap the bat signal and your living room will become the coolest one ever. For the last step, I'll set the bat button on my front door. I used Velcro command strips so I can take it out easily whenever I need to charge it, which will probably be in like two years. In theory, we're good to go. The only thing left is to wait for someone to visit me and ring my super awesome bat doorbell. Oh, right. I have no friends. I guess I'll get an Uber Eats. Being a vigilante is part of my being. I'm always prepared, always watching, even when it seems like I'm just lounging on the couch eating peanuts. Every ring of the bell could mean a friend is calling, or more likely, a pizza delivery. But I can take chances. The city needs me. And by city, I mean my apartment. And even though I don't have a Robin, I do have a dumb robot that hasn't failed me yet. When the bad button is pressed, I rise to the occasion, like justice itself. Now we wait, until the signal shines and the mission begins, or until my Amazon package arrives, whichever comes first. Lechi, uh, I mean Batman, troubles at the door, or maybe it's just DoorDash, either way, suit up. Hello, I'm here. Uber Eats from Batch Tech. I'm Batman. Are you let's attack or not? Because this is the address that appears on the app. Just just give it to me. No. Just, I can't give it to you if you're not let's attack. Just, I'm Batman. I ordered. I'm, I'm Batman. Give it to me! I'm vengeance! Come on! No! Where are you going? So on a quick note, if you don't want to piss off half of your floor and very likely get an eviction notice, you shouldn't scream I'm vengeance and give it to me, dressed like a sketchy Batman at 1 a.m. Other than that, I can confidently say that I have created the coolest doorbell ever. So thank you for watching and see you in the next project. Gotham's finest delivery. I mean, danger awaits. Open the door, Dark Knight.